Hello and welcome to another Revit tutorial. In this video we're going to be talking about Enscape 2.0. Specifically we're going to be talking about lighting and how to set up some of your artificial lights in your Revit project so that they look really nice in Enscape. If you've seen this demo project in the past you'll know that there's a lot of natural light coming in so that is one of the big considerations with your Revit project. I can't really help you when it comes to natural light because that is just governed by how many openings you have in the exterior shell of your building. But I can try and give you some tips for making your artificial lights look really nice and to cast a little bit more illumination into your project. So let's go ahead and get started. The easiest way I've found to test your Revit lighting families before you bring them into your project is just to create a separate project, put it on your desktop, and I call it the lighting test room. It's pretty much just a floor, a couple of walls, a few ceilings, different types. I have a 2x4, a gyp ceiling, and a little cove, and then it's a lid. So you're blocking out all of the exterior light, and the only thing that you're going to see that's illuminated inside are your actual Revit family lights. So let's go ahead and place a couple in the ceiling and see what they look like. I'll go to my RCP, type CM on the keyboard for component, and let's drop in a 2x4 light. I'll place on face. Click. Oops. Let's rotate that 90 degrees. Align it to the grid. And then we'll copy it a couple times using the grid to keep us evenly spaced. Now let's go to Enscape and see how that looks. I'll go to Enscape. I've set up a 3D view right here. Click Start. And here you can see the lighting fixtures that I brought in. It has the illuminated lens, it's casting a lot of light, it's hitting the floor. All the other sources of light are blocked out. That's why I like this technique, this method of testing your light so much, because you're only seeing the light that come from those Revit families. So let's go ahead and check out another Revit family. Maybe I'll want to put some recessed cans in this gyp ceiling over here. Go ahead and hit CM again for component, type in recessed can. Which one was it? Tribeca round recessed can. Let's drop these in. And I only want to see the light from these can lights, so I'll go ahead and delete out those 2x4 lights that I dropped in. Now let's go back to Enscape. Should have updated automatically. So we can see that these lights, we can identify them, we can see them, but they're not really casting a lot of light. So I'm going to show you a couple different ways of modifying these existing lights so that they actually give you that look that you need for Enscape for your presentation. So let's go back to our RCP. I'm going to select that family, edit the family. And right here I can see that that's, that's the lighting housing in the, in the ceiling there. This is the plane of the ceiling where you place the light, and it has a light source right there. I'll hit HH to temporarily hide it. And the light itself, right here, that lens, is has a material set to it. Let's see what it is. It's the lens material, easy enough to remember. Let's go to the properties there. The lens is Polycarbonato Transparente. I don't know if that's Italian or Spanish. A lot of these manufacturers um, are international, so that's excellent. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and close that. So we've identified what the lens material is. So if I select that, it's a type parameter. We go to edit. It's the lens right here, probably Carbonato, Transparente. Hit the materials right there. And if I want to, I, I usually like to duplicate it so I'm not overriding the manufacturer specific material. Let's call this one, uh, we'll, just, we'll just add light to the end of it. Why not? Use render appearance. And it's pretty important on this. When you go to appearance, you want to duplicate that asset. So it's not overriding the original one that we just copied there. And the property that you want to check to actually get it to glow in Enscape is self-illumination right there. We'll go ahead and give that a, let's say, desk lamp lens, 10,000. Color temperature, <laughs> we want to drop that back to oh, 6,500. Hit apply. Hit OK and then OK again. That material is then going to update. It's a type parameter, so every instance of that recessed can is going to update the same way. Let's go back to Enscape and see how that affected the light. 
So now we can see that it's giving off a little bit of a glow. It's not really casting light out as much as we want. We have a little bit of floor lit right there. But I'll show you a workaround so that we can get a lot of light from these small recessed cans. Again, the manufacturer specifications are usually pretty spot on. Uh, so you don't want to exaggerate it unless you're doing an actual just presentation rendering. So this is this is a technique I like to use. Uh, we'll go to CM, load family, and we're going to load from the Revit default library in their lighting folder, architectural, internal. My favorite one, it's called Studio Light. And if you see that, it's just an orb that emits light in every direction. I'll open it, and for some reason, when I have this Studio Light, and I, and I try and place it in my project. It usually comes in at different levels. So let's go ahead and go to a 3D view and let's see where that's actually coming in. I'll uncheck my section box. Looks like it's coming in right at my ceiling level at about eight feet. So I'll go back to my RCP right there. And let's, uh, let's copy that on each light. So when you take this studio light, you bring it in, put it over each lighting fixture. Again, that's right at eight feet. And if I see what that looks like in Enscape, it's really bright right there, right on the lighting fixture. So to fix that, what you can do is go ahead and select all instances visible in view, I guess, because these are the only four that I've placed. And I'll offset it two feet down so it's just below that recessed can. And so now you can see that the lighting fixtures are with that self-illuminating material and the studio lights are also casting out a lot of illuminance to your space. So that's one workaround. If you have any dark corners in your project, you just pop a studio light in there for your rendering and it should brighten things up a little bit. So the last thing that I want to show you, well, two of the last things, is setting a custom light material and then also uh, lighting a cove so that you get a wall wash effect. So let's go ahead and bring in one of the most common lighting fixtures I'm seeing as of late. And to do that, I'm going to actually go to bimobject.com. This is where I get a lot of the lighting families that I need for my projects. They're, most of these files are put out by the manufacturer. You just create a simple account. It's free. Go to browse BIM objects. And you can type in whatever you're looking for for your Revit project. For this one, I'm going to type in Delray Lighting Tube because I'm seeing these everywhere. Big light, six inch. Just click on it and go to download. I want to download the Revit family file and there it is. Lighting pendant. I'll upgrade it from 15 to 16 and this is pretty much what it looks like. I'll select it real quick. It's an embedded family. I'll edit that piece and I'll see what I want illuminated because if we look at the actual family Looks like this cylinder is what is illuminating and the rest of the fixture is not. So we want to get that cylinder to, to show up nice and bright for our Revit project. So the material that's set there, it's under housing for the type parameter, acrylic, Delray lighting, etc. So I'm going to close that. I've identified what material I need to update. And we'll go ahead and press CM for component. I'll place on face and I'll go ahead and drop that in. Let's see how it looks in Enscape. Doesn't look very bright, does it? Not very bright at all. So let's go back and let's figure out how to change that material. This is going to be setting up your custom lighting material for your project. Edit the type and I'll see that the housing is set to by category. Um, transparent light. That was the other one. So we'll just go ahead and create a new material down here. Create new and we will name it underscore so it jumps to the top of the list. Lighting material. Sure, something generic like that. Name it whatever you want. Check use render appearance. Go to the appearance tab and we're going to replace this from the Revit library. I'll go to appearance library, glass, and if you scroll down, you'll find one that says Luminous Translucent White. This is the one that I like to use for all of my self-illuminating materials in Revit. We have a self-illumination uh, tab down here, and it's set to Lampshade Interior right now, 2500. I'll go ahead and click OK, and that's set under the housing. 
So if I click OK, that housing material is now set to that self-illuminated glass. And let's see how that looks in Enscape. So right there, it's illuminating, it's lighting the ceiling a bit, the floor, it's not super bright, but it is casting off some light, which is the desired effect. So the last thing I'll show you is just creating a default light. Sometimes in Revit you just can't find the lighting family that you need, but you're on a deadline and you need to get this cove lit. I don't know how many times I've looked for a linear light fixture that just does not work for my project. I've ended up using this technique. You're going to go to Architecture, Component, and you're going to Model in Place. Select Lighting Fixtures for your category, hit OK, OK, and you're going to Create Extrusion. I know that that cove is at 8 foot 6, so the extrusion end is going to be 8, 6, 8, 6 and the start is going to be 8 4. Material, I'm going to set it to that material that I just created. Lighting Material, it has that self illumination, and I'll just drag a quick rectangle into the cove. Hit the check mark, that extrusion is created, I'll finish the model, and now I've got a little two inch linear extrusion in that cove. Let's see how it looks in Enscape. So go over here, there it is. It's doing a nice little wall wash effect. It's casting light all the way down to the floor. Let's see what happens when I crank that illuminance up, because there were settings on that material. If I go back to manage, materials, lighting material, appearance, that self-illumination category right here, instead of 2500, let's see what it looks like at 10,000. Hit OK. It'll update. Enscape updates instantly. And here we've got a brighter glow cast from that to the floor. Just keep in mind that you want to keep your lighting, your self-illumination materials in the same ballpark. You don't want one to be more than 2,000 more or 2,000 less than the other. When you do that, one will show off as it's casting light and the other one is just going to show off as if it's painted white. So try and keep them within the same uh, number, I'd, I'd say by at least 2,000 points or 2,000 on that, on that self-illumination increment and you'll be fine. So those are, those are a few techniques that you can use. Remember, just save out another project as a uh, lighting test room and you can test all of your Revit families before you put them into your presentation project. So those are all the tips that I have. If you have a tip or a comment, please post it below this video. You'll be helping me out. You'll be helping other people out who are looking to learn some tips or tricks for using Enscape in their Revit project. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks a whole bunch for watching. Subscribe if you'd like. I'm going to be putting out more Enscape tutorial videos. Uh, your comments are really helpful in, in figuring out what the theme for these videos are going to be. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.